Christmas University Challenge. Asking the questions, Jeremy Paxman. Hello. As the nation's students returned home for Christmas, we likewise put our main series on pause and invited distinguished alumni of 14 UK universities and colleges to put their fingers on the buzzers and their knowledge to the test. They all demonstrated that at least some of what they learned as students has stuck, though often stuck further out of reach than they might have hoped. <laughs> After seven heats and two semi-finals, two teams are left standing and the winners tonight will be crowned series champions. Now, the Edinburgh team are here thanks to victories over Leicester in round one and Bradford in the semi-finals. Their knowledge of film, food and Fulbright scholars helped them score 305 points across those two matches, despite British history and Boccaccio being met with blank faces. Representing the university for the third time are a writer on architecture, a chef, food writer and restaurateur, an actor and comedian and a professor of Hispanic studies. Let's hear them introduce themselves for the final time. Hello, I'm Kath Slesser. I studied architecture at University, graduating in 1984, and I'm now a critic, editor and writer and president of the 20th Century Society, which campaigns for the preservation and reuse of modern buildings. Hi, my name is Thomasina Myers. I graduated from Edinburgh in 1999, studying modern languages and economics. Uh, I co-founded Oaxaca. I'm a chef, restaurateur and food writer, and I'm a trustee of Chefs in Schools. And this is their captain. Hello, I'm Miles Chupp. I'm an actor and writer. I studied divinity at Edinburgh University uh, from 1999 to 2005. Hi, I'm Phil Swanson. I graduated from Edinburgh in the mid-1980s with a PhD in Hispanic Studies. I'm an academic and critic specialising in Latin American literature and culture, and I'm an advocate for the learning and teaching of modern foreign languages in their cultural contexts. Now, the team from Hartford College, Oxford, overcame the London School of Economics and St Anne's College, Oxford, to reach tonight's final, scoring 285 points along the way. They were very impressive on ballet, biology and people from Croydon, less so on cocktails and silent film stars. Returning for the final time tonight are a jazz musician and composer, a Tudor historian, a political correspondent and a former cricketer turned sports journalist. Let's meet them once again in their own words. Hi, my name's Soweto Kinch. I graduated from Hartford College, Oxford with a degree in history in 1999. And today I'm a jazz saxophonist, an MC and a composer. My most recent work is called White Juju. Hello, I'm Dr. Elizabeth Norton. I studied for a master's in European archeology span at Hartford between 2003 and 2004. I'm a historian and my most recent book is The Lives of Tudor Women. And their captain? Hello, I'm Adam Fleming. I studied geography and graduated in 2001. I'm now the BBC's chief political correspondent and I also present the podcast, Newscast. Hello, I'm Isabel Westbury. I studied physiology at Hartford College, Oxford. I graduated in 2013. and I'm now a sports journalist and financial crime lawyer. Well, you're all old hands at this by now, so you know the rules. Fingers on the buzzers. Here's your first starter for 10. What surname links all of the following? The West Indies batsman who took over as captain from Viv Richards in 1991, the actor who played Queen Elizabeth I in Blackadder 2, the comedian... Uh, Hartford Norton. Richardson. Richardson is correct. Well done. <laughs> so you get the first set of bonuses. They're on events that marked their 75th anniversary in 2021. In February 1946... Which Norwegian was elected as the first UN Secretary General? He resigned in 1952. I don't know. Dag Hammarskjöld. Is it Dag Hammarskjöld? No, it was Tegva Lee. In 1946, in Fulton, Missouri, who said, Behind that line lie all the capitals of the ancient states of Central and Eastern Europe? Is it, is it the, iron, the Iron Curtain? Yes, state? it is. It's Churchill. Oh. Yeah, Winston Churchill. It was Winston Churchill, it was the Iron Curtain speech. In a 1946 referendum, which European country voted to become a republic, having been ruled by the House of Savoy? Italy. 
Italy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Italy. 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 Italy is correct. Well done. <laughs> Ten points for this. What instrument was created in 1921 when the Canadian-born physiologist John A. Larson devised an apparatus to simultaneously measure changes in a person's blood pressure, pulse rate and respiration rate while they answer questions? It may be used in police investigations... And it responds in... Lie detector. Yes, I'll accept that. Polygraph is correct. <laughs> you get a set of bonuses. On the films of the US director Richard Donner, who died in 2021, name each film from its summary on the IMDb website. This film, firstly, of 1985, a group of young misfits discover an ancient map and set out on an adventure to discover a legendary pirate's long-lost treasure. The Goonies. The Goonies. The Goonies. The Goonies is correct. Secondly, this 1987 film, two newly paired cops who are complete opposites must put aside their differences in order to catch a gang of drug smugglers. Is it great? 48 hours, is it? 48, yeah, try 48 hours. 48 hours. That's no, lethal weapon. Finally, a film released in 1976, Mysterious Deaths Surrounded American Ambassador. Could the child that he is raising actually be the Antichrist? The Omen. The Omen, yeah. The Omen. The Omen is correct. <laughs> Ten points for this. What single-digit number represents all of these? The number of Vedas in Hinduism, the number of nucleobase types in DNA, the number of rocky terrestrial planets in the solar system, and the number of freedoms, according to Hartford Franklin Westbury. D. Roosevelt. Four. Four is correct. Well done. <laughs> Your bonus questions are on words or names that can be made using only the top row of letters on a standard typewriter keyboard. In each case, give the answer from the description. Firstly, a species of tree in the family Taxaceae, often found in churchyards and graveyards. Yeah, quite yeah. Yeah. yeah, you. You is correct. Secondly, a five-letter noun meaning habitual reverence and obedience to God or devotion to religious duties and observances. Piety. 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 Piety is correct. And finally, the surname of the Brazilian-born motor racing driver who won three Formula One World Championships Senna. in Senna. the 1980s. I think it's Senna. 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 No, Senna. it's Quartiui up on the keyboard. Oh, yeah. Oh. No, there's no S in it. No. Oh, I don't know that. Brazilian. I don't know. Senna's the only one I know. Rose. No, that's S. Q W E R T Y U I O P. We don't know, do we? No. No. Sorry, don't know. Quarter you up. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, do. no, it's PK, Nelson PK. Oh. <laughs> right, for your picture starter, you'll see the title of a Christmas carol in its original language. Ten points if you can give me the title of the English version. And it jump. Oh, come all ye faithful. Oh, come all ye faithful is correct. <laughs> it's one of several Christmas carols, often still sung in Latin. For your picture bonuses, you'll need to identify three more. In each case, You'll see an excerpt from the lyrics with the title removed. You need to give that title in Latin for the points. Firstly... For the title... It's not... Who's that one? Uh, Children's Voices Praising children Something. Who is Born Amongst Us. It's Come Let Us Adore Him. Children's Voices that begins with... Was that Lord of the Dance? Lord of the Dance. Lord of the Dance. Lord of the Dance. No, it's not. Come on, you've got a linguist on your team. I'm not a very religious linguist, unfortunately. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm Virginia, Virginia Adoramus or something like that. Sorry? Virginia. Hosanna, Hosanna in excelsis. Yeah. yeah. Hosanna in excelsis? No, it's Personant Hodier. Secondly, the Latin title of this carol, which combines Latin and German. <laughs> Alpha and uh, Omega. Let the organ thunder. Is it Dulce Jubilee? No. Is it that one that's got like like the organ thunder? Da, 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 da. Oh, what an absolute nightmare! God, <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you study <laughs> divinity. Yeah, I know. I, I, we didn't do a lot of lectures about carols. I hope they've rectified that since. Um, no, I've no idea. Do you cast suggestion? What was it? Dulce Jubilee. No. In Dulce Jubilee. In Dulce Jubilee is correct. <laughs> <laughs> and finally. <laughs> okay. Emmanuel. Isn't Vinnie Emmanuel or something? Welcome, Emmanuel. Vinnie Emmanuel. Well done. Yeah. Yes. 
Ten points for this. Taken from French, what five-letter word is a generic term for a group of items on a common theme? For example, computer uh, programs. Half the Fleming. Or spe a genre. And they lose five points. Or pieces of music. An example of the last of these being John Ireland's Downland Work for Strings. And Ember Swanson. Corpus. No, it's sweet. Right, ten points for this. I need a two-word name. What industrial region of about 360 square kilometres straddles a major watershed of England, being the source of rivers that flow north and east to the Trent and south and west to the Severn? It comprises most of the boroughs of Sandwell, Dudley and Walsall. Uh, and the city Hartford of Kinch. West Midlands? No, you lose five points. Edinburgh Jump. Black Country? Black Country is correct, yes. <laughs> the West Midlands is much larger. These bonuses are on censorship. Defending the ideals of the French Revolution, which work by Thomas Paine was originally withdrawn from publication in February 1791 for fear of prosecution, only for it to be published the following month? The Right to right Man. Yeah. The Right to Man? The Right to Man is correct, yes. Secondly, which novel of 1759 satirised various religious and philosophical viewpoints of the time and was listed in the papal index of banned books? It opens in the Westphalian castle of the Baron of Thunder, Tentronk. Condide. Condide. Condide is correct. Whose 1644 pamphlet, Areopagitica, argued against the censorship of books before publication? Plutarch. Dryden. 1644, did you say? I don't know. Dryden. Dryden? That was John Milton. Ten points for this. What halogen element is this? A key constituent of hormones secreted by the thyroid gland. It derives its name from the Greek for violet coloured. It is essential for the body and hence small quantities may be added to table salt. Edinburgh Myers. Iodine. Iodine is correct. <laughs> These bonuses are on chemistry. Give each term from the definition. All three answers begin with the same letter. The electrode that attracts positively charged ions and at which reduction occurs, for example, in electroplating. It's cathode? No, it's not. Cathode? Let's no. try it. Cathode? Cathode is correct. So the easy. process of breaking a large molecule into smaller molecules, for example, in fractional distillation at an oil refinery. We'll start with the same letter. C-A-T. C-A-T. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. uh, so what's it with? I've seen three letters. One. I think you said three. Yeah. Is oh, it right. when it's on? It's when it's spinning. Is it that thing? When it's spinning centrifugal. Around? Centrifuge. Centrifuge. Yeah, centrifuge. No, it's cracking. Oh, yeah. The process, finally, by which fluids are organised into regular structures, for example, in sugar refining. Crystallisation. Crystallisation. Correct. Ten points for this. Answer promptly, naming two of the three football clubs that between 1900 and 1992 won the double of First Division title and FA Cup. Edinburgh Swanson. Arsenal and Liverpool. Yes, the third one was Tottenham Hotspur. <laughs> right, so you get the set of bonuses. They are on animation, directed by Marion Cooper and Ernst Scheutzak. Which film of 1933 is noted for its pioneering stop-motion animation effects developed by Willis O'Brien? King Kong. King Kong. Sorry. King Kong. King Kong. King Kong is correct. Which animator worked alongside Willis O'Brien on the 1949 guerrilla film Mighty Joe Young and went on to lead the special effects teams on films including The Seventh Voyage of Sinbad and The Valley of the Guanji? It's not Ray Harryhausen, is it? Ray Harryhausen? Yeah. Ray Harryhausen? Ray Harryhausen is correct. Yes. Harryhausen's last major cinematic role as lead animator came in which film of 1981? which featured Harry Hamlin as Perseus and Ursula Andress as Aphrodite. I think it was Hercules. Clash of the Titans. Oh, Hercules? Clash of the, no, no, Clash of the Titans. Clash of the Titans. Clash of the Titans is correct. <laughs> right, we're going to take, with the scores on 30 and 105, we're going to take a music round. For your music starter, you're going to hear part of a symphony. For ten points, please name the composer. Hartford 
Westbury. Is it Verdi? No. You can hear a little more, Edinburgh. Anna Bruce Swanson. Schubert. It is Schubert, yes, it's the name. It's great. You heard there the first complete recording of Schubert's Ninth Symphony, which was by the conductor Leo Blech, who celebrated his sesquicentenary in 2021. Your bonuses are three more notable recordings by Blech. Again, name the composer of each piece. Firstly... No, that's Mendelssohn. Mm -hmm. Secondly... <laughs> Wagner is correct, yes. It's Votan's farewell from uh, the De Valkyrie. And finally... <laughs> Rimsy Korsakoff. Rimsy Korsakoff. No, it's Beethoven. Ten mm. points for this. The children's author and illustrator Jill Murphy, who died in 2021, is perhaps best known for what series? Edinburgh Jump. The Worst Witch. The Worst Witch is correct. <laughs> so we get a set of bonuses for you coming up this time on two-word French terms. Identify each term from the definition. All three answers end with the same three letters. First, an artistic or figurative description of the equalising power of death, such as that portrayed in a symphonic poem of 1874 by Camille Saint-Saëns. Come on. Record more. <laughs> Record more? No, it's Danse Macabre. Oh, Secondly, a description of late 19th century works of poetry, such as those by Gustav Kahn, that are not restricted by traditional rules of prosody. The English translation of the term is sometimes also used. Vers libre, or something like that? Vers libre. Vers is correct. Finally, a lawsuit that attracts a large amount of public interest or notoriety. Oh, that's a cause célèbre. Cause célèbre? Cause célèbre is correct. Ten points for this. Since 2010, Catriona Matthew and Alison Nicholas have been winning European captains in what biennial international trophy an equivalent of the Ryder Cup? Edinburgh Slasher. Solheim Cup. Solheim Cup is correct, yes. <laughs> These bonuses are on US politics. In 2018, which politician and activist launched Fair Fight Action to combat voter suppression and educate electors about their voting rights? Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez? No, it was Stacey Abrams. Fair Fight Action is credited with assisting Democratic wins in which state's high-profile Senate runoff elections in January 2021? Georgia, yeah. Georgia. Correct. Name either of the two winning candidates in the January 2021 Georgia US Senate runoff election. Literally no idea. No. <laughs> we have no idea. That's Ossoff and Warnock. Right, ten points for this. Born in 1902, which US humorist wrote the New Year poem Good Riddance, but now what? And the collection The Bad Parents' Garden of Verse. He also wrote the epigram Candy is dandy, but liquor is quicker. Edinburgh Swanson. Ogden Nash. Correct. <laughs> you get three questions on fruit in mythology for your bonuses. In Greek mythology, Hades tricked Persephone 
into eating a seed of what fruit in the underworld, thus condemning her to spend four months of each year there? A pomegranate. Correct. In Norse mythology, the goddess Idun was associated with fertility and eternal youth and the keeper of which fruit? Norse. 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 The big fruits in Norse. Logan berries, berries or something? <laughs> Berry. Berries. That's apple. Meaning island of apples. What name was given to the place where King Arthur's sword Excalibur was forged? Um, I don't know. It's a pomfract or something like that. Like that. Okay. Let's have it, please. Uh, pass. It's Avalon. Avalon. We're going to take a picture around. For your picture starter, you'll see a fresco showing a biblical scene. For ten points, I want the four-word name conventionally given to this subject. Edinburgh Slicer. Slaughter of the Innocents. Or the Massacre of the Innocents is correct, yes. <laughs> so, that was by Giotto. Your picture bonuses are three more paintings of the same subject. This time, I want you to name the artist for the points. Firstly... Or, yeah, or Goya. Goya. No, it's Ruben. Ruben. I don't think it's Goya, no, I think. No, it's not. Ruben. Ruben. Rubens. Yeah. Rubens? It is Peter Paul Rubens. And secondly. Um Jenny Schick. Jim Kemp. Try Bellini. I don't but I'm not sure. Bellini? No, it's Guido Reni. And finally, I want the name of the artist to whom this work is usually attributed. Just the surname is sufficient. That's Bruegel. Bruegel. It is Bruegel. Well done. <laughs> right, ten points for this. Damage in the fire in the 18th century, the manuscript known as the Noel Codex contains Judith and which well-known early English poem? Hartford Norton. Beowulf. Beowulf is correct. <laughs> Your bonuses are on bands that had UK Christmas number one singles in the 1970s. Identify each band from the clue or clues given. In a colony of social animals such as insects, what term denotes an individual female or caste Queen. that is capable of reproduction? Queen. Queen is correct. The adjectives alar and aliform refer to what appendages in animal anatomy? Wings? Wing? Paul McCartney? Yeah, wing. wings. Wings is correct. What word can precede sucker, skipper and puppy in the names of various animal species? You have a slate puppy? No. <laughs> um, sucker. Blood. Blood sucker? No, it's yeah. animal species, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Darkness? No. Come on. Should I pass? Just say blood, yeah. then. Blood. blood. It's mud, as in lonely <laughs> this Christmas. Right, ten points for this. Commemorating a groundbreaking international event of 1972, which three-act opera premiered in 1987 and was composed by John Adams? Edinburgh Slicer. Nixon in China. Nixon in China is correct. <laughs> These bonuses are on scientific terms, derived from words meaning concealed writing. What name is given to the scientific study of codes and ciphers? Crypt cryptography. Cryptography? Correct. Moss being one of many examples, a cryptogam is a plant that uses what type of cellular units as a means of reproduction? Microcorsi. 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 That's spores. Mm. In psychology, the term cryptonesia relates to a hidden form of what neurological process or function? Memory. Memory. Memory is correct. Ten points for this. What UK city links these two museum ships? The location of the last survivor of the Battle of Jutland, HMS Caroline, and the name of a landmark near Tower Bridge on the River Thames. Edinburgh Slicer. Belfast. Belfast is correct. Well done. <laughs> Your bonuses are on performers who won both the Academy Award for Best Actress and the Golden Raspberry. Who won a Razzie and an Oscar in the same weekend in 2010 for the films All About Steve and The Blind Side? Sandra Bullock. Sandra Bullock. Correct. Who won an Oscar for the 1976 satire Network and a Razzie for playing Joan Crawford in the 1981 Fade film Mommy Dearest? 
Faye Dunaway. Faye Dunaway is correct. Halle Berry won an Oscar in 2002 and a Razzie three years later, marking her roles in which two films? I need both titles. Is it Mon Monsters? Monsters Ball. Monsters Catwoman, I think. Catwoman. Catwoman. Cat Catwoman. Catwoman. Monsters Ball and Catwoman? Correct. <laughs> Ten points for this. Born in Wisconsin in 1867, which author recounts that Christmas was postponed? Alfred Norton. Laura Ingalls Wilder. Correct. <laughs> You've got a bit of coming back to do, but you might do it. You never know. <laughs> yeah. Your bonuses are on paintings. In each case, give the single word place name that completes the following titles. Firstly, a work of about 1599 by El Greco. The walled city in question appears beneath a vibrant, dark sky. View of what city? Babylon? Yeah. Was it walled? I don't... I, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Babylon. Babylon? No, it's Toledo. <laughs> the most famous cityscape of the Dutch 17th century. These words describe Vermeer's view of what town? Delft. His birthplace in 1632. Delft. Correct. Flowering orchards are named in the title of an 1889 work by Vincent van Gogh. View of which city between Nîmes and Marseille? What's that? The Loire. No, the Loire. No. That's a pleasant place. Oh. Marseille. Um, no, it's in between Marseille, isn't it? Come on. Um, I'll, I'll just choose something. Is it Arles? Arles is correct. Ten points for this. <laughs> what nationality was the Pope who crowned Frederick Barbarossa in 1155? He's the only man from the country in question to achieve the papacy. Hartford ah. Norton. English. English is correct. Your bonuses are on terms that end with the same four letters. In each case, give the term from the description. Firstly, in physics, perpendicular force applied per unit area. It is measured in pascals, that is, newtons per square metre. Pressure? Pressure. Pressure? We said four letters. Oh yeah, God. but the last four the letters, yeah. yeah. Pressure. Pr pressure? Pressure is correct. Sure. <laughs> Historically, the conversion of common lands into private property. The term appears Enclosure. in the name of numerous acts of parliament from the 1600s. Enclosure. Correct. According to Dr Johnson, a narrow chasm where a breach has been made. In anatomy, this term Fisher. may refer to a sulcus of the brain. Fisher. Fisher is correct. <laughs> Ten points for this. The French idiom, metro boulot dodo, describes the somewhat uninspiring daily routine of some urban adults. What do the three words mean in English? Take a punt. Uh, half a kinch. Shower, shave. No. <laughs> I wonder where you were going with that. <laughs> no, it means commute, job, sleep. So you're a convincing victor, Edinburgh. Congratulations to you. And thank you all very much for taking part. There was no trophy, there was no reward, there's no tawdry <laughs> cash prize, nothing. <laughs> Just glory. Well, that's it for this year's Christmas special series. Many thanks to all of our guests for taking part and to you at home for watching. I hope you can join us next time for the return of the student series. But until then, it's goodbye from Hartford College, Oxford. Cheers. 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 <laughs> and it's goodbye from Edinburgh. Bye. Merry Cheers. Christmas. Cheers. Merry Christmas. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye.